Hi guys, welcome back on the channel. Today we're going to do a flick through uh, of um, Peter Greenhill and Mario Venturi creating Miniature Knights book. I've done this uh, flick through again quite some time ago, but this time I want to focus in the major pitch battles and show you why this book is so interesting and I'm using it to get many information. So at the beginning, we're not going to do at all this. At the beginning, the book talks about um, the history of um, of miniatures uh, with some very nice photographs explaining different manufacturers and um, how they were produced. It's it's, it's quite an interesting uh, read. Um, it's, it's, it's a big part of the book. Um, sketches of how the author, I think, they created their own miniatures as well. And um, information in general uh, about heraldry and about how they created, uh, meanings are created, some coat of arms, quite nice sketches actually of combatants that are not famous. This is a good um, source information about um, lords or squires that are not famous to everyone. Here are the two authors, Peter Greenhill and Mario Venturi. And let's go here where it's um, a great part of the book that are really interesting. These beautiful dioramas uh, for the Battle of Gracie, one for the Battle of Poitiers and one for the Battle of Agincourt. Now why this is so interesting because uh, the book talks about events that are not mentioned in uh, when um, when you read about the battles and the campaigns in the rule, events that happened in the actual battlefield, uh, battles between uh, famous commanders who had uh, personal issues, talking about French knights here, as you can see, and uh, it shows, it has photographs from uh, different parts of um, of uh, the, the diorama. This is uh, talking about John the Second, John the Blind of King of Bohemia, and it talks about the clash. The repeated charges of the French cavalry would all end in the same outcome. The attackers would fall in flocks under the volley of enemy archers' arrows. The English men at arms massacred the few French who were able to reach them. After raising themselves with difficulty from the fallen horses, Benchwil, Warren and Odraham were struck to the ground once more by the blades and arrows of the sure-footed English soldiers who lay in wait. So uh, it, it shows, let me, let me go a bit closer, it talks about events, for example, he, they talked about Warring and Audrey Here it's talking about Raoul, Duke de Lorraine. Just keep in mind that the book is in Italian and in English. Another story, the English resist. The continuous French attacks were becoming unbearable. The Prince of Wales himself was saved thanks to the readiness of Sir Richard Fitzsimmons, who hiding behind the flag of the Wessex Dragon prevented the French from individuating the Prince as he fell to his knees. Sir Thomas Norwich was charged with requesting reinforcements from King Edward. The King, whom he joined near the main body held in reserve, responded to Norwich's with a request with the exclamation that my son earned his spurs today. This phrase and fifty men at arms were enough for the Plantagenet. The young prince would not disappoint him. The Count of Auxerre would fall under his sword. All the princes faithful were there by his side, including Sir Richard de la Bear, Cobham, Reginald Cobham, Bartholomew Burgess, Fitzsimmons, Daniel, and the mythical Sir John Chandos, one of the most respected of the epoch and future great friend, enemy of Bertrand de Guslin. This is what I like about the book. About, it has some really brilliant photographs of the combatants from the diorama. It's talking about, for example, the story of Sir Thomas Daniel. Now we go to Poitiers, another beautiful diorama. Uh, look at this. I mean, I wish I had miniatures this size and big armies. I, I probably need to sell my house, but uh, it's incredible. It explains also to you how you make, your di make the dioramas here. Look, I mean, look at how medieval battles were fought. It was mayhem. It was, it was, it was crazy. I wish we could find rule sets that portray this um, picture talks about the dioramas I told you about the Battle of Poitiers and here you have Sir Giles Beecham and on the right um, you have uh, Northampton and uh, here again they explain about our, uh, the diorama here is the King John II again stories about Jean Le Bon and Philippe Le Hard 
uh, this is his son when he was young, who captured the end. Um, Thibaut and Thomas de Vondenay, again, stories about separate nights. That is what I like. Dioramas, combatants, little stories about Warwick, about uh, other uh, commanders who fought, what they did. And um, you see here, knights injured and saved by their uh, friends. And um, here is uh, the Oriflim, uh, the Oriflim bearer, Geoffrey de Charny, who was killed um, by Reginald Cobham great commander of course obviously Captal de Bush another story about Captal de Bush again English armament it talks about armament these are English knights uh, uh, Sir, Sir Stephen uh, Cosington Sir Waring Bassingburn um, Sir Thomas Bradstone here who was the banner bearer of the Black Prince Again, a lot of stories about what happened. And there's a very nice story about Sir James Audley here. Here is Sir James Audley carried uh, by his squires after he was injured because um, he was a hero of Poitiers. So let's read about Sir James Audley. I wish I could read you more about this book. Um, Sir James Audley and his squires. On the eve of, uh, of the combat, Sir James asked to be the first to initiate the battle against the enemy. The Prince of Wales conceded him the honour. Thus, from the beginning of the combat, Sir James Audley would rush to precisely where the melee was most intense. Wherever the English formation was about to cede, there was, accompanied by his faithful squires, to counter-attack and repulse the French. At the end of the day, the same squires would carry him to safety, covered with wounds, to the tent of the Prince, where he would be welcomed and nursed attentively until shortly before the arrival of the captured Valois King. Sir James is universally considered the hero of Poitiers, second only to the Black Prince, whom he would serve as faithful man of war for his entire life. The Audleys were a very important family that boasted the famous William Longsby, Earl of Salisbury, and one Hugh, Earl of Gloucester, among their ancestors. So you see, it has really many stories. It talks about the Gaskins, heroes and felons, another very interesting um, uh, paragraph. Again, look at this. Look at how beautiful this diorama is. I'll go closer if you can see it. Again, here is the prince uh, the king and the king who were captured. And there is a story about uh, how they were captured and who captured them. And then it goes to Agincourt, another great battle. Um, we have um, the major combatants. You will see also here is the, is a, this is a diorama. Agincourt, the story about behind Agincourt. Let me read you a couple of paragraphs. Agincourt was one of the most notorious battles in history, yet, how many aspects of the event still remain unknown. The approach and narrative style of the chroniclers of the period are once again unable to help us. The number of forces in the field is not well ascertained. It is estimated that between six and 11,000 men fought for the English and 20,000 or many more fought for the French. There are doubts about the size of the wings of the French cavalry and it's not even certain who of the French commanders commanded each wing. The role played by the French shooters, crossbows and artillery is not well known, nor where they were actually arrayed. The assertion of the French reserve body was on horseback is more of a deduction than a conclusion based on precise information. Finally, scholars do not agree as to whether the English formation was composed of an alteration of corps of men at arms and archers. With these preliminary remarks in the mind, let us review the proposed formations, the proposed formation as presented in the most credible version. So there's a lot of information about Agincourt. The Princes of the Lily, nice diorama uh, here, diorama also. We have different commanders, really beautiful, beautiful diorama. The Plantagenet fall here, the king checkmated. I really wish the melee, hand hand combat, and uh, here is um, part of the diorama, I think. The sunset of chivalry. And here it goes uh, to after the battle, what happened, uh, banners and standards, talks about the standard bearers, many, many photographs. Um, archers and infantrymen, as with these Italian, these are English. This is very nice here, excuse me, where you have um, 
Henry V and Royal Banner Bearer Sir John Condrickton, Agincourt, commercial figures of SGF. Look very nice, this is beautiful. I wish I had miniatures like this. I said I have to sell my house, but if I was not married, I'd probably do it. Again, look at the battle. How can we find rules that portray this mayhem? And here you go with um, the deployment of the battle. You have here uh, Crazy, where you have the Black Prince in two, four was the Longbowman, one Edward III. Um, on number three was Northampton and Arundale with the Longbowman in the front, and here you have obviously the French. Uh, again, you have the deployment of Poitiers and the deployment of Agincourt, realizing how, how close the English went from A to B uh, in order to entice the French to charge them. Um, here again you have uh, this France after Agincourt and here you have uh, France after Crecy and Poitiers. So I think Agincourt was looked, you know, so they had more here, the, Fran the, the English during Crecy and Poitiers in Gascony, but look all Normandy is English. Um, under Henry V. And here you have uh, obviously the family tree and uh, the succession of uh, the French crown. And you see here Edward III under his what, mother, uh, mother, Isabel of France. All Philip IV children had only daughters. And then obviously the French, to avoid Edward III becoming the king, gave the succession to the Valois, the brother of Philip IV, his nephew basically. It's nice to see the connection of the families. And here is one of the most, most brilliant um, parts of the book, uh, the armor of knights from Crazy to Azicor. And here you see, with some amazing graph sketches, the development of Helms, for example, starting from Germany 1220 and reaching up to England 1415, and how the uh, great Helms developed the same. They have here, Kuras, um, of coat of plates and how we started with partial plate armor and you reached full plate armor these, these sketches are unbelievable unbelievable um, again more sketches of how the armor looked again here more and of course the story behind it the birth of white armor 1390 and 1420. It's a really a great analysis of, of the armor and uh, here uh, more sketches. And at the end you have a very nice index of heraldry from the battles of Crecy and Poitiers, this French and French allies, where it shows you uh, CNP means the fort in Crecy and Poitiers and uh, uh, the cross means he died in Crecy and Poitiers and uh, the X means he was prisoner. So you have this poor guy who I think is uh, Count of Blois, number 14, and I think it's Blois. Let me check. Uh, yes, Guy de Chatillon. Okay, Guy de Chatillon. Um, yeah, Count of Blois is the other one. Who fought at Crecy and he fought at Poitiers, poor man, and he's captured both in both, in both battles. Here you have Grace and Poitiers, again, French and allies. Here you have uh, uh, the two uh, Douglases who fought in Poitiers. And you have the English combatants for Grace and Poitiers. Obviously, here is Sir James Audley. Uh, you have uh, Sir John Chandos. And um, uh, here, for example, 22C, he fought in Crazy. He was the banner bearer of the Black Prince um, who fought in Crazy. And Sir Giles Fitzsimmons, Fitzsimmons, who saved his life, basically, in Crazy. Here again you have uh, Crecy and Poitiers, uh, allies here, of course, obviously, uh, Capital de Bush and many other commanders, the Earl of Salisbury. Uh, and here you have uh, Sir, Sir Walter Woodland. Sir Walter Woodland was the command, was the Habana bearer at Poitiers. And here you have Agincourt, uh, the Battle of Agincourt, the French. Uh, obviously you have uh, Marshal Pusico who was captured. He was this is Marshal Busico, he was not killed. He was captured in Poitiers, wasn't he? 23. Jean de Marguerite Busico, Comte de Beaufort. I think he was captured. And here again, the English at Azure Court. Uh, obviously, you have Lord Camorge, who was commanding the right flank. You have Sir Lord uh, Sir Thomas Erpingham, and obviously all the famous commanders. So this is the book I gave, I gave more... Um, um, 
let's say, focus on the second part of the book, uh, where you have the brilliant dioramas and um, uh, beautiful stories. And why I, I really think it's exceptional, because um, it mentions stories of knights uh, that, um, and, and events that are not mentioned in the major books, and that makes it quite interesting. Anyway, guys, uh, this is from me, Creating Miniature Knights, Amaro Venturi, Peter Greenhill. I uh, hope you enjoyed this flick through. There's another flick through with more uh, focus on the first part of the book. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, bye bye. Have a great remaining weekend.